Welcome to In the Labs with Tim Sway. I'm Tim Sway, this is my lab, and this week's project is to make this stool. It doesn't look like a stool. This stool. <laughs> okay, so this design is a little bit different, but it's easily modifiable for people that are not of the guitar persuasion. But I make and sell guitars, and I do these trade shows where I bring the guitars for people to try them out. And um, I haven't found the right stool yet. Uh, the criteria that I wanted was I wanted something that was easily flat packed so I could put it in with my stuff and carry it in and out, not have it take up a lot of room in the van. And I also want it to be just a little bit lower than a typical stool. And I wanted to have this footrest be adjustable because I have guitar players of different sizes, shapes, and ages that come into play. And I wanted everybody to be comfortable and have their foot at the right height for their knee to play, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing I did was I added a spot where you could hang a guitar cord, put some guitar picks and a tuner, because um, those are the kinds of things that guitar players and me at the trade show need. So I'm going to show you the ins and outs of the design, how I made this, how I cut it, and what I learned about cutting plywood along the way. To begin, I'll show you a little bit about how I designed the shape. Um, I wanted to keep it to a two foot by four foot space because that's the size of my CNC machine and I figured that was a good sort of size piece of wood to work with. I created two rectangles, one the width of the bottom of the stool and one the width of the top, it's 10 inches and 16 inches. And then I took the wider one and just shrunk the corners in using the node mode to the top and that gave me my basic shape. From there, I used the offset tool to offset an interior. And um, just with some simple guides and basic node editing, created some of the shapes of the stool. It's all real basic stuff. I also created another rectangle on the inside, like to run as a stripe down the center, and then use the scissors tool to sort of snip and connect all of the vectors into the positions that I wanted them. Jumping ahead now, you can see my first design, and um, I wanted to add some little dog ears to the holes in the top of the stool so I would be able to slide those pegs in and out without them getting stuck. And, uh, and then I wanted to cut them out and try it out, but I didn't want to waste a whole three-quarter inch sheet of plywood, so I shrunk the file down exactly one-third the size and cut it out of a quarter-inch material instead on my laser cutter. This gave me an opportunity to check all the math at exactly one-third scale and see if things were going to work. One of the things I love about this tech is how I can um, easily prototype and, and practice and make adjustments on these things, and especially um, just using basic math, I can shrink it down and do it in small scale so I'm not wasting a lot of time and materials experimenting in full size. Uh, and I have the added bonus of having that, that laser over there, which just makes this uh, super quick and easy for me to cut out these prototypes in miniature out of quarters MDF. So here is the, this is the original design I had, um, came up with in my brain mind, but what I wasn't counting on was the issue I would have because the math is different here as you slide down. Um, I wanted to just have these railings that I could put in and uh, in order for them to work, um, they would have to either all be unique, and I didn't want to do that. I want to have one that works for all so I can easily adjust it. Um, so then it gets sort of sloppy looking when you have to make this oversized hole to fit all this stuff. Um, I put it out on Instagram and my stories to some of my friends there. I was like, hey, this is what I'm doing, and this is the problem I'm having. What do you think? And one of the, the most common responses I got was from people to just simply make this bottom part straight. So now the slant doesn't go all the way down. It, it sort of comes to its, its uh, peak width here and then completely straightens out there, which is fine. I don't mind the look too much. I do like the look of it this way better. Um, and then that would solve the problem to where all of these notches would be the same. So I could create one piece that fits in all of them. But then my buddy Jeremy came up with this idea. He, he came up with this ring shape uh, that would then slide over and he put notches instead of those full slots and uh, just sent me this simple little drawing and then that makes it so you could put these down and slide it. I messed around with that a little bit and it wasn't quite working so I modified it to look like this with just a very simple like arc to it and now that I can slide over this I to slide the wide points over the rails and then just twist and lock into place. And that works pretty well, but what also I can do with this 
is now since I'm doing this twist lock that has nothing notched or grooved and it's just a com like a complete thing, I could reapply it to this shape. And you can see here, it already starts to work right now. The math isn't right because it's the wrong size to, it's too wide to grab this top one. But here in the bottom two, I can twist and lock this into place already. And I think that's a better look. And this is doing more of what I originally envisioned. So back to the drawing board, we're almost there. I went back to the Vectric file and I created a sort of a, it's almost like a saw blade type shape on the inside and I had to make the, do some math to figure out the width where it needs to be, you know, from the top for the widest part of the stool as well as to the smallest part of the stool and created that shape. I also added my arrow flare to the shape of the cutouts in the stool. I use a lot of arrows in my branding and I just thought it looked cool. And I ran some test cuts to make sure my quarter inch end mill would be able to take care of those eighth inch dog bone shapes corners I put on my stool top and it all seemed like it was going to work well so I created some tool paths and cut it. I just went to my local box store to find some plywood and I wasn't liking what I saw. It all had these very very thin veneers that just didn't look like they were going to work well for me and I didn't like that and it seemed cheap and I also didn't like the price because that wasn't cheap but I did find over in another part of the plywood section this $30 board of pine that is all solid plies with no veneer and it looked pretty decent so I thought I'd give that a try yes that's my truck it's uh, actually got the steering wheel on the right hand side and I live in America where it's supposed to be on the left but they let me register it and I save a lot of gas this way it also makes a good workbench for breaking down sheet goods and I cut down my 4x8 into four 2x4 four pieces of plywood in this great set of cutters made by Whiteside that I got from Avid CNC, there is this, which is a quarter inch compression bit, and that means that the tip cuts in sort of both directions. Um, I'm sure you can look it up to get a better explanation of how that works, but they're supposed to be good for plywood. Here's a little tip. I painted my wrenches for my router yellow, and I put magnets right there on the corner of my CNC bench so I always know where they are. And I had to hang the wood over the edge a little bit uh, so I could make sure to get my full two foot by four foot cutting area. Because I had stacked some usable parts together by having the stool fit inside the foot ring, I thought I would have to take this stool top out before making other pads. So I ran a separate tool path and cut that out and then removed it before doing this on my first one. Subsequently, I found that wasn't necessary and you can just run all of these files at once and set it and forget it. I was super excited to put it together right away. It was a little bit tight on the top, I have since adjusted that, and that's my workbench that's uneven, not the stool. Um, and it all seemed to work really well, I was pretty pleased with it. The one thing that was bumming me out was that for that ring to twist in the proper direction, it was lefty tighty righty loosey, and that wasn't going to fly, so I changed the direction of the sort of saw blade shape to make it spin in a more appropriate way. Especially in the second position, it sort of falls in the way of the leg. Um, the third position seems pretty good. It's right on the edge there. So I'm probably just going to leave it. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Those completely unnecessary pockets that I put in there just sort of got in the way of the legs. Um, but I left it as it is because they're still usable even when they're there. I just want to take a minute to show where I put some screws in to hold this down to my wasteboard. I put them in the corners here on the right side, like a pretty typical sort of location to just screw that down. But on the left side, I was worried about hitting this corner, so I didn't put one here. I put two of them up a little bit higher where I knew there was going to be some, some safe spaces. Had enough of this video and you're ready to go just cut your own stool? Great, all you have to do is go to Vectric.com and log into your VNCo account. Once you're logged in, you can download this file and it will work with Cut2D Pro, VCarve Pro, and Aspire. Um, it needs to be the Pro version for the size, but if you have the desktop versions, you could easily cut this up into two pieces and cut them separately. Uh, it's a great, easy project, and it's also modifiable. Now, if you don't play guitar, you could take this whole thing right out of the equation and have an even simpler stool that you could then 
just remove these notches and it's a shorter stool so your feet will touch the ground for most adults. And it's a lot simpler and cleaner looking that way too. Or you could uh, modify this to do whatever suits your needs. I'd be curious to see what you come up with. You might want to make the top a little bigger, you might want to sculpt it. Sky's the limit. So here's the basis for it, the rest is up to you. I put a very slight round over on the footrest and stool top on both the outer and inner profiles just to smooth it out, but I didn't bother on the legs. I just left them as they were because of all those nooks and crannies there. I was afraid it might get weird looking. I messed around with my laser with putting my guitar business logo into the stool and um, I liked the subtlety of this, but I thought I'd try it again where I put masking tape all over the top, did it again, and then infilled the negative space with spray paint to make it more noticeable, but I think I liked it the other way better. I also upholstered one of them with this piece of foam. I have an old school bus seat, don't ask, <laughs> and I have this synthetic leather that we used when we made my own custom vegetarian version of Carolina work boots that are available at carolinashoe.com in case you're curious and you're a vegetarian that doesn't like wearing leather like me. I didn't do a great job upholstering it. I don't really know how to get the wrinkles to look just right, but it works fine and uh, it was kind of fun to do. I messed around with a bunch of different finishes, including painting one of them black, and I used uh, my favorite go-to finish, Total Boat Halcyon, which is a water-based and it sprays really nice. I sprayed a couple coats on it. I tried spraying one with it assembled and one with it disassembled. And then one of them, I just used my beeswax linseed oil mix that I make myself. And that was actually my favorite for this because it helped it get a little bit more slippery when you were putting it together and it was really easy to do. Okay, so I may have cut a few stools now. <laughs> but uh, I went and I sent my files along to Vectric to take a look at as well as to Corey and Sammy over at Avid CNC, the makers of my CNC machine. And they wrote back, hey that's cute, why don't you try cutting it like this? And they made some changes to my tool paths. I'm going to drop a piece of plywood on the CNC machine and just cut it the way they sent it to me right now without even looking at it. And then I'm going to open it up and show you on the computer what they did differently than me. But more importantly, they have made a video over on their YouTube channel at Avid CNC of a basically like a crash course on how to cut plywood on the CNC machine with all sorts of insider information and real like pro tips. So go check that video out. We'll put a link somewhere here for you and uh, you got to learn a ton about cutting plywood and I can't wait to watch it because I have a ton to learn too. But I'm going to see the difference now with this. If you watch Avid's video about this, they'll probably do a better job explaining it, but the first change they made to my tool path was here. They staggered the depths that they cut to make the compression bit work more efficiently. And since that first pass is a little bit deeper, they made it ramp in so it wasn't like plunge cutting. They also slowed the machine down a little bit and added bigger tabs for less concern about parts flying out. This is an example of the wizardry of CNC that keeps me coming back for more. So I just ran this file that I got from Avid CNC and it is a much better cutting file than the one that I ran. I can see already that the edges are cleaner, but what I noticed uh, that is just blowing my mind is that the dust collection worked better because the cut was a better cut for the material. This is the kind of stuff that just excites me to realize like how little I know and how much there is to learn and how much better I can get. So go check out Avid's video on this stuff because apparently they know what they're talking about. It's even keeping my shop cleaner. That's crazy. I always forget that I have this oscillating cutter that I use to cut the tabs out since they were a little bit larger and I couldn't just pop them with a chisel like on my file and uh, I've, it's just such a great way to do this. <laughs> You can see how nice the edges look right out of the box, and with the oscillating cutter I'm able to flush cut right along the edge of that, so it's even less sanding to do. One additional note, the holes in the top of the stool are still pretty tight, and I did use a rasp to just sort of clean up that inside and round it over. I didn't want to make them too loose, um, so just be careful when you're putting it on because you could split the plywood if you force it. And a rope in the shape of a loop is all you need to simply carry this away. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention about these? They stack really well, too. Hey, my eyes are up here, buddy. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you make this stool. Um, now, 
I want to invite you over to my YouTube channel, which is just my name, Tim Sway, where you can see I made this stool, and you're like, well, big deal, I just watched you make it, but this one I made out of plywood that I made myself out of recycled hollow core doors. If you're into reclaiming, upcycling, that sort of thing, you can see me make this, as well as this, and all sorts of other things at youtube.com slash timsway, and go check out that Avid video, too, about cutting plywood on the CNC. You're gonna love it. So, I'll see you next time in a couple months. Until then, be good.